What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here and today I'm going to be bringing you a locals match that happened yesterday at the RMC locals. This is going to be between Tidamon, Chaos Gallimon on the left and then on the right we're going to be having the Bond of Bravery, just full Bond of Bravery. So the die roll goes there, we're going to see the Bond of Bravery going first. So pretty standard, going to start off with a couple Agumons and try to search out a Greymon there but going to whiff. And let's see how the purple player wants to build up. I'm not 100% sure how this matchup is going to go naturally. I can't say I've really watched this matchup happen too many times. So um, whatever can go here on the purple side to kind of stop the offensive pressure that this Bond of Bravery can get is going to be pretty huge. Only being able to get one check from that Greymon there is pretty big because you probably want to go for a more rookie rush aggressive style, especially if you're not going to be hitting your ties early on. So going in with those swings with the Greymon and then playing out the two drop Agumon is going to be pretty good, but we are going to see a Digiburst and then go into the Vilemon. So now having a blocker and an ultimate on the board, which you can go on top of for a Titamon or a Chaos Gallimon, but just going to go with the draw one, discard one of the Labramon going wide on on board so we can already see the purple player actually start to get a grip on this board as much as we've been able to see a bunch of rookies coming from the bond of bravery side we're going to have to try and find some other game plan because if they do go into the Chaos Gallantmon on top of this Black War Graumon, they could delete one of the opponent's Digimon, plus we have a blocker which would stop another one of the Agumon. So with all these Agumons on the board and no tie on the board, you are looking a little bit stuck. Obviously, the Rookie Rush option from the Agumons is technically a potential option, but we are going to see the Titamon come out, which is going to discard the Ginkaku Promote and then bring back the Ginkaku Promote and getting one of the resources underneath. So now matching the Agu Bond with an equally wide board, but with a much higher uh, efficiency board on the left here, being able to have the Titamon to potentially go for multiple checks while also being able to unsuspend. We have a blocker, we have the Ginkaku Promote, which uh, will be pretty helpful in being able to get extra swings there. So Gonna get the Flamimon here out and hit the Marcus, so that is great, but you are definitely looking for the tie there, so not the one we really needed. The Ginkaku Promote is going to swing there, going to discard a card to get the Kinkakumon's effect to delete one of your opponent's rookies. So getting rid of an Agumon there, so getting even more uh, removal on board. And then going to be able to swing two checks by getting rid of the Kinkakumon now. Going to be hitting the uh, zero drop option. I forget the name of that card, but it does have the draw three effect. Going to go into hand, and then the Red Reamer is going to come out and pop the blocker. Now, that is something that could have helped uh, get on the board, but the unsuspending of the Titamon is just a bit too much and then able to go in there. So being able to seal off that game, that was a game where I feel like the Agubon player definitely could have gone a whole different direction if they hit the tie there. Having to just play a bunch of Agumons on board when your opponent has a lot of removal is going to be pretty rough. Even had just the Ginkakumon come out with the Ginkakumon underneath it that allowed it to delete one of the Digimon. So having the rookies swarm the board proved game one to not be very effective and something that you're probably going to try to avoid here but we're going to see the Marcus come out so at least not going to get choked on board going to discard the Kinkakumon for the Rebellion Mon effect so now having retaliation and blocker likely no attacks coming out anyway so not something that we have to worry about too much an Agumon coming out to search the top five but still not finding a tie so after all this we still haven't found a tie and I do believe that's going to be a card that's going to probably be pretty impactful in here just because the bond of bravery being able to get over some of the bigger things like these blockers while also being able to get security checks will definitely help out um, and get that speed that you needed the first game while also being able to play around some of the removal that purple has with both this chaos Gallimon and the Ginkakumon Luckily for the Agubon player right now, there is no defense or really anything that's going to be removal from the purple side, so I do see this as a good opportunity to start get some early checks in. You're likely going to want to be cycling and raising anyway if you're not going to be having the tie, so you're going to be wanting to try and find something for you to uh, cycle and get those cards that you need. So I can definitely see wanting to swing in here, swinging in with the Flamimon first. I don't think there's any option removal, so we are going to be safe not swinging with the Greymon here, but I would be surprised if we aren't going to swing the two checks here. Uh, you do get the 1k boost, so two checks are going to be good, and it does survive, so so that is pretty good, meaning that the purple player is going to have to either attack into this or commit a card to get rid of it, um, so that way it's not able to threaten more checks. 
But we have one memory from the Agubon player here. Gonna read Chaos Gallantmon really quick just to make sure getting a full understanding of what's going on here. Um, doesn't have the Black War Growlmon underneath, which means there's not gonna be any unsuspending like we saw from the Titamon the first game. So this is looking much better for the Agubon player so far, although likely going into the purple player's next turn, they probably won't have too much on board just because this Greymon's probably going to have to get deleted just so it can't get those checks in. And then you're likely going to probably try and set up some sort of blocker or something for this Flamimon. We'll see what the purple player does, but I do think being able to get these early checks is going to be pretty huge. You can go back into raising, and if you do hit tie, then you can just threaten to go for game coming up. No blockers coming out. We do know that there are Agunimons in this list as well, so you can threaten to go on top of these Marcuses with the Agunimons. We are gonna see that actually happen right here, so going to swing in. It will survive, so once again, another Digimon that the purple player is going to have to swing over if they want to stay alive, but playing the other Marcus does potentially set up for another Agunimon if that's what you uh, have in hand. We did see the missing of the Rookie in Raising, which does kind of make me question what is in that hand, like how big is it that you are just going into Agunimon and then Marcus with not playing a Rookie? There must be probably another Agunimon in hand, or there's probably some bonds, just something that's going to have to need a second piece to be played. And if it is the Agunimon, that is actually probably pretty good, just because unless the purple player puts up a blocker right here, then you can just go into Agunimon next turn and swing for game. This Chaos Gallimon is likely going to swing over the already active Agunimon, making it so, yep, that that isn't a threat any longer. Now, from the purple player's perspective, there isn't technically anything on board, and they did just use an Agunimon from hand, so the chances of them having one in hand is gonna be a little bit lower. Can get the Titamon, so gonna be able to discard and bring back a level four, but do they have the Vilemon? Uh, no Vilemon, just bringing back the Labramon, gonna get the uh, draw one, trash one from the effect, gonna trash the Ginkakumon, and then go up to three with the Marcus Celesi. Do they have the Agunimon? And they do have the Agunimon, so just gonna go in and swing there. Now, that was a little bit more what I kind of expected from this matchup, the uh, Agubon player being able to just go for high aggression and the purple player having to play reactively. It's not what we saw the first game, so we can definitely see that it can go either way here if the purple player does start to get their removal going and get some blockers going then they can be pretty good. If they did have a Vilemon there, then the Agubon player would have been shut down from what we could have seen. They obviously could have had some sort of option in hand to get rid of a Vilemon, but if they did have that Vilemon out, it definitely would have slowed down. We see them just hard play a Vilemon here, so it's definitely in the game now, which means that it can be brought back from the discard. Um, even after it does get deleted, if it does get deleted. So a much better start from the purple player on a fundamental uh, level now, being able to cycle that Vilemon around will slow down a lot of checks. We did notice that the missing of blockers allowed a lot of early checks to go in. We saw the Flamimons go in. We saw the Greymon get two checks and then two back-to-back -back Agunimon. So I do think this Vilemon is going to be a pretty big piece to the puzzle. Um, being able to go into the Rebellimon does help as well to get blocker. Now this Titamon is going to have blocker, so you're definitely not going to be swinging in with this Greymon, but if they do get rid of this Vilemon and make it so there are no blockers on board, you could potentially have the option of starting to go in and start um, getting those swings in, but a Gaia Force just going to come out and pop the Titamon, just representing a little bit too much pressure for the Agubon player to like. They are once again missing a Rookie and Raising, which is very surprising. I do believe that these Agubon lists usually run a decent amount of Rookies with those Agumons and those Flamemons, so missing those is going to be pretty crucial. It's going to slow down the deck a lot. There is an, a Greymon on board that could get multiple checks, but now you're just looking a little bit too far behind. Another Titamon on board with a Ginkaku the Goblimon chill in there and then the blocker that is just shutting down this Greymon. We are going to see the Flamimon hit both Flamimon and the tie so we can get a tie on board. That is going to be very huge. If you have bond in hand then you can promote next turn, go into bond and start getting some deletion going and some checks going which is going to just have to be your game plan here but if we don't hit anything in security this could just be game. We are going to see the swing for two checks unsuspend from the uh, Black War Growlmon there. We do hit the Transcendent Sword to pop the Vilemon, which is very huge. Not only does this make it so the purple player does not have enough Digimon on board to swing game this turn, but it also does mean that the Greymon can go through for checks. 
gonna hit a bond in security so Tidemon's going down and still have the Ginkaku that can swing in for this last check if they want to. If I'm going to be completely honest, you are probably in the market of swinging this Ginkaku in and actually hoping that it dies because if your opponent goes into Bond next turn um, and they don't have the ability to pop one of your Digimon with the effect, they won't be able to trash one of your security, meaning that uh, you would have less uh, pressure coming from you from that Agubon, but we're going to see that it hits a tie, so it is going to survive. Now the opponent's going to get an extra memory and an extra draw next turn, so definitely not the swing that you wanted uh, coming from that security, but I do think attacking with the Ginkaku was correct, assuming that it was going to go down in security, just because, like I said, if they can't pop one of your Digimon, they can't trash the top of your security, which means that the amount of pressure that a Bond can do is very little. But now we're sitting with a Ginkaku on board, a Black War Gramont in the back, and I don't think there are blockers in this list that are going to be able to save the Agubon player. So it's really going to come down to do you hit the Magnetromon here. But even then, I don't think it's going to matter going to hit the, the mat, bringing back one Digimon and then hitting the Underworld's Call, which is going to bring back the Vilemon, which is pretty unfortunate because that is a Digimon, another Digimon that does threaten game on board. Um, gonna have to swing to pop the Vilemon, gonna trash the top and then get one security check because we don't have the correct Agumon underneath. So we did get to clear two security there, but unless you have Magnadramon, I do believe this is just gonna be game. Gonna swing, searching with the Agunimon there. And we're gonna have to see right here if the Magnadramon is in the deck or in the hand, but it is not. They are just playing another Agunimon, showing that if they had two extra memory, then they could have went for game there. But without the memory boost in the starter deck being legal yet, you do not have that extra two memory. So they aren't gonna be able to take it out. So purple is going to take it with that Ginkaku swing coming in. And the players here are just gonna be discussing uh, some sort of game plan revolving the Rebellimon there. I'm not 100% sure what they are discussing, but with that being said, the purple player is going to take this. This was a very interesting match. I haven't really seen this matchup happen too often, and uh, it didn't really go exactly how I expected it. The purple player did have some really nice options to stop what was going on here, but the lack of rookies from the Agubon list is a bit unfortunate. I do uh, know that this list is pretty high on option cards, so maybe a consideration to cut down on the option cards and go higher on the rookie count, but with that being said, that is going to be today's match. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be having a bunch of BT6 content coming to you and we will be having starter decks legal soon. So we will be having some post starter deck matches coming very shortly at the end of this week. But if you are interested in some more BT6 content, I'm going to be uploading a bunch of content as well as I will be doing a lot of live streams, including tonight at 5 p.m. MST slash GMT minus seven. Me and my good friend Chris will be having a deck building stream talking about the meta as well as answering any of your questions. So if you are interested in checking it out, be sure to come by tonight and check out the live stream. But if you can't make it tonight, there will be a VOD and there will be more live streams. So with that being said, I hope you have a great day. Peace out.